Well, real news dominating headlines impacting real lives, and it's got people feeling real good about this economy. Markets in rally mode to end the quarter. The Dow soaring 254 points. This on upbeat economic data. Jobless claims fell to the lowest level in over 40 years. Consumer sentiment coming in at levels not seen since 2004. And get this, the part that measures what they call current conditions, how we feel right now, the highest level ever. Joining me now to discuss Vince Colonnais, Daily Caller Editorial Director, Ned Ryan, American Majority CEO and former George W. Bush presidential writer, David Nelson, the Chief Strategist at Bell Point Asset Management Co., and Aaron Gibbs, a Portfolio Manager at S&P Investment Advisory Services. Before I get to the Wall Street experts, guys, let me talk to you guys on the political side because this is amazing stuff. And what we've seen recently is a higher uh, poll numbers for President Trump and Congress. And I got to believe these numbers that we're seeing are starting to reflect Vince on Main Street. Yeah, I think they are. And I think they could hold. I mean, this is the case that Republicans need to make, by the way, in 2018, which is constantly pointing to all of the economic indicators. The very reason, by the way, that Donald Trump was elected president of the United States, this notion that he's a businessman, that he can correct things and he can make them work. And not only the good news that you're presenting today for the president, but the news yesterday that the revised uh, fourth quarter uh, went up. And that means that the first full three quarters of the Trump presidency were at a 3.1% growth rate. That's over the 3% target the Trump administration was pushing. And uh, it well outpaces all of the laughing that the Obama administration was doing when Trump suggested this would happen. Larry Summers said this was going to be a fairy tale. It was a tooth fairy belief. And guess what? It actually happened. You know, I can't believe you brought up Larry Summers. I'm going completely (laughs) off script now. But Today he resigned from Lending Club. The stock is down 87% in the last four years, okay? I mean, yeah, the economic genius that's criticized everything that President Trump has done was on the board of directors of a company that should have been up 87%, down 87%, but I digress. Ned, what, what do you make of it all? No, I, I think Vince is right. I mean, this is, the, this is the message. This is the political climate Republicans have been given to run on in the midterms, which are typically historically tough for the party in power at the White House. But I, the, the thing that they need to keep doing, Charles, is not only sell the message, but Trump needs to keep talking about everything that's going well with the economy, but also lay out a vision for why things are going well. And Charles, the thing that I really want him to keep talking about is he's doing some very sophisticated things behind the scenes. He's deconstructing the regulatory state. He, he cut or delayed over 1,500 regulations, and then he's linking that to judicial nominees who want to deconstruct the administrative state. Charles, the tax cuts are great. They're, they're fuel to our economy. Uh, But if you really want to see the economy take off, you've got to remove those police parking boots, the regulatory state from it. And the only way that he can continue to appoint and have those conservative judges that will deconstruct the regulatory and administrative state, they have to keep Congress in 2019. So I want to see Republicans start pitching a vision for the future. Put us back in the majorities in 2019. We will continue to do more of this. We will make the small business and individual rates permanent and we'll deconstruct the administrative state. Before we get to 2019, though, Aaron, we've got to get to 2018. Yes, we do. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the question now, because this was a tough month for the stock market. The last couple of weeks are really treacherous for the market. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, I, I see headlines that seem to dominate and move markets a lot more than the economic data moves it. Uh, you know, is that something that we should be worried about? Does this happen periodically? And what does it mean for the future? Well, the problem is with the economic data, it's very in the past. You know, it's backward looking. And the numbers we even got today, a lot of the inflation index indices and that type of thing are all about February numbers. So over a month ago, Wall Street tends to be more focused about what's going to happen the next 12 months. We're always sort of worried about how the trade impacts are going to affect us over the next 12 to 18 months. So it's very different between your economics that are in the past and what am I worried about is going to happen tomorrow. Today was great, and I agree that the Republican Party should really concentrate on what was going on. We actually saw a nice big uptick in inflation. It's the first increase in the PCE, the core inflation indicator, since April of last year. And it mainly came from wage growth. So that is really good. So at least in February, we're starting to see trends that the that the base right. consumer is actually feeling right. that. And you see that in sentiment indicators. Yeah, and that one of the sentiment indicators, of course, the Michigan sentiment was revised today. Cur- uh, current conditions at an all-time high. Uh, and the interesting thing, it's the, it's the lower one-third of income households that are really feeling the most optimistic. Day. I, I agree. Uh, 
economic policy, economics and policy, you know, are a go right now. But the stocks don't live, live in a vacuum. And right now, probably the biggest headwind is some of the things you just mentioned, some of the things that happened in the last couple of weeks. Facebook was part of that. Big tech was part of that. But we're not talking about the elephant in the room, and that's the Fed. The Fed is embarking on a policy mistake right now. And that's what markets are sending. 30-year yields breaching 3% is telling the Fed, take a breath, take a breath. Inflation at 1.8% year over year is not, nothing to worry about yet. Uh, so with the market, with this rally, Aaron, uh, how, how, how are you feeling? I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of people got spoiled from last year, right? Even yeah. the pros, I think, got spoiled. Uh, more of a realistic situation, particularly as it pertains to President Trump, these policies that he's pushing through, that he's gotten through, how should that impact the economy and, more importantly, the stock market for the rest of the year? So the fundamentals are still phenomenal. The economy, all the news is great. Profit growth, revenue growth, all that stuff's great. What's screwing things up are all these headlines. And I think we're going to continue to see continued volatility. For us right now, valuations are great. We're trading at below 17 times forward earnings. That's below the three-year average. This actually looks like a reasonable place to get in, right. um, even after the rally right. today. Um, and ultimately, we should revert back to the fundamentals. But there are just so many concerns coming out with the headlines between the tech getting hit, industrials getting hit, banking getting right. hit, oh, and now Amazon. So your consumer discretionary gets and, hit, and too. Then, and then, of course, uh, Vince, there are things that have nothing to do with the uh, stock market at all. Like a potential affair that might have occurred a decade ago or the president making changes with uh, with his legal team uh, you know things like that you know anytime there's a chance to mention constitutional crisis it's splashed all over headlines and I got to tell you it does it has been impacting the market yeah and I imagine that that's the that's the stuff that Republicans are going to get behind them as they approach Election Day. Democrats are clearly hoping that that wounds the president and it wounds the Republican Party so that they can seize control of the House and actually proceed towards impeachment. Uh, but I, I think here there's two concerns. One, for the, the president, focus on the economy. For the Democrats, the risk of overplaying their hand. I mean, this is why, you know, Nancy Pelosi has been resisting even going for these calls of impeachment, but yet her face seems to be a very effective way to run against the Democratic Party. They just put it up in ads and it works. So Democrats, again, are really risking overplaying their hand by going off right. on these tangents. By the same token that uh, uh, the mainstream media and Democrats have been able to use a lot of President Trump's tweets uh, uh, against him. And, and a lot of it muffles the, this great news. A lot of it takes away from what's easy, low-hanging fruit in my mind. Again, it's stuff we're talking about right now. People understand. People understand a record amount of job openings right That's now right. in this country. It's amazing stuff. No, this is, this is, listen, I'm one of the biggest uh, supporters of President Trump and, and all that he's been able to accomplish in his first year. It's been a phenomenal first year in office. It does frustrate me a little bit that he steps on his good news. And so I've, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I kind of want him to be a little bit boring between now and the midterms, focus on promoting all of these great things in the economy, jobs, wages up, unemployment down. Focus on all of these things. Be a little bit more disciplined on Twitter. I love 85% of his Twitter feed, but be a little bit more disciplined. Right. Don't step on your good news and see if you can't get a consistent and disciplined narrative for the next eight months so you can be successful. Sure. Keep the Congress and, and continue putting in good policies. 